Hey guys, backing up your Raspberry Pi is super easy, especially when you use tools like Balena Etcher. And I've done a video walking you through the entire process of how to clone your Raspberry Pi's micro SD card. But for many of us running web servers, bots, and a boatload of other things on our Raspberry Pi, we don't always have the time to turn it off, remove the SD card, plug it into a computer, and then copy the image. And that's why I'm gonna show you how to make a copy of your Raspberry Pi while it's running using a Mac. So before you decide to do this, try to fully understand the rules behind this process. First of all, the backup is done over the network while your Raspberry Pi is online. And this is risk free, so you can do this as many times as you want. But to do the restore, you have to make sure that the SD card of your Raspberry Pi is exactly the same size as the one that you use for backup. And in fact, I would highly recommend using the same model, manufacturer, and disk partitioning. So if you're following along to do the same process, try to keep that in mind. But now that we have the disclaimer out of the way, let's go ahead and get started. On your Mac, let's start the terminal and run the following SSH command to remote into our Raspberry Pi. In your case, you should replace Pi with the user that you have set up on your device, if it's any different. Secondly, make sure that the host name reflects the name of your Raspberry Pi. If you only remember the IP address, that's fine since you can use that too. And so once you enter your password to authenticate SSH, you should be connected to your Pi by confirming the name change on the left. Let's run the lsblk command to get a list of all the block devices on a Raspberry Pi. The one we care about is the one that has disk as its type. So let's go ahead and copy the full name of that device. At this point, you can kill the SSH connection by calling exit. Next, we're gonna be running a slightly longer command and you can find this in the video description too. But to help explain this command in detail, we're first SSHing into our Raspberry Pi. Using that SSH connection, we're running DD, which is a utility that's used to copy and convert data. And the if part is referring to input file and we are feeding it the device that we copied from the Raspberry Pi earlier. Then we're specifying the block size or BS, which tells your Mac how many bytes to read per block. After that, anytime we use a pipe, all it means is that we're reading the output of a command that's on the left and piping it to the right. Gzip is a utility that basically compresses files since our backup is going to create one file. So we need it to be as small as possible. And after the double quotes have ended, you can see that we have another pipe. This means we're piping the output of gzip to the next command on the right. And the rest of the command is using the dd utility locally on the Mac to write the output file to the image called pybackup.gz. You can pretty much copy the command as is, but just make sure that your Pi user, hostname, and your Mac's desktop folder are matching yours. Once you run that command, it's actually asking for your Raspberry Pi credentials, not your Mac's. Then the backup process should start, and this can take a while, but really it depends on things like how fast your SD card can be read as well as how fast your local internet connection is. For me, it took about almost two hours, but once the backup is complete, you can confirm that it worked by looking at the status of the results. And of course, making sure that there were no errors. So the backup should now be on your Mac's desktop with the same name that we gave it in the previous command. And the next part we'll be going over is the restore process. Hopefully you have a USB drive or at least some kind of an adapter that helps your Mac recognize a micro SD card for restoring the backup. But before you plug this in, start the terminal and run the disk util list command. Now plug in the micro SD card and rerun that same command. You'll see a newer disk that's now showing up on that list. That's actually how we'll identify which storage device to use when doing the restore. So let's copy the name of that disk because we'll be needing it next. And for us to write to the SD card, 
we'll need to run this command to unmount the device first. This makes sure that our Mac is not doing any accidental reads or writes to it in the background. So now we can safely start the restore on the SD card. We'll use the gzip command again, but with two additional options. So option D is for decompressing and option C is for writing the output as standard out. Then we're feeding in that backup image from your desktop and we're piping it to the DD command on the right, which is what's writing everything to the micro SD card. Just make sure that you paste the device name to avoid a typo for the output file. After that, you can simply eject the drive with your micro SD card from the Mac and then pop it into your Raspberry Pi. Again, keep in mind that if you don't use either the same type of micro SD card or even if it has different partitions, you might encounter errors like these where the restore can prematurely end because it had more records to write than what was available. But if all goes well, then you now have a super convenient way to back up your Raspberry Pi on the Mac with a single command. In fact, you could maybe even take it a step further and maybe set up scheduled backups of your Pi. This way, you can have backups of different snapshots, which you can easily go back to at any time. Thanks for watching. And for more on Raspberry Pi, please consider subscribing to this channel.